Good afternoon, guys. I hope you're doing well. I'm back with another video on our in our series on creation. Um, just a reminder for those of you who haven't seen the other videos or just haven't remembered for whatever reason. <laughs> this series, guys, is me answering common questions and criticisms um, concerning the biblical narrative for creation. Basically, the Bible says that the universe and everything in it was created by God, and so. A lot of people have questions or even criticisms about that they don't believe it and so I'm trying to answer some of those common ones and I'm doing so by relying mainly on the Bible the Bible guys is our is our final authority for life and faith as Christians we need to turn first and foremost to the Bible and you'll see me raising my hand and whatnot my Bible's right here um, the Bible needs to be our final authority it needs to be what we go to first when we're trying to help people understand God and everything he's created in his word. Not that science isn't important or isn't useful. Science is. Science provides many examples of the truth we find in scripture, but we need to rely on scripture first and foremost. And so that's what I'm doing with these videos. I'm turning to scripture first. And my hope with all of this is that you guys become confident and comfortable in your faith so that you feel prepared to answer people who have questions for you when you're talking about creation or anything else. So that's what this series is. That being said, let's dive in. Now today's question, um, I, I think it's a pretty good one, mainly because I don't really have an answer. And I think it's one of those times it's okay not to have an answer. Um, not that I wouldn't give an answer, but I'll explain it all in a minute. So today's question is, why did God create in the order that he created? Why did God create things in the order that he did? That's a very good question, and I don't know. The, the simple fact of the matter is, I don't know. I can't answer for God, and unfortunately, the Bible doesn't give us a clear, and God created for this reason and this order. It doesn't tell us that kind of thing. So we kind of have to draw some inferences, and I kind of have two... Uh, two thoughts on this question, how I would respond to someone who asked me, why did God create in the order he did? Um, first, though, I want to I wanna take a second and kind of just briefly talk through the order of creation, the, the six days of creation plus the final day of rest. So, that being said, let me just walk through the order of creation. Day one was light and dark, basically day and night. God created light and darkness on day one. Day two was the ocean and the atmosphere. And it's kind of interesting when it talks about what God did on day two, it says he took the waters and separated them. The waters were already there. We know that because it took place before day one in the beginning. Um, but anyway, God separated the waters, which kind of leads you to some interesting conclusions that we'll, we'll talk about later probably. Um, but basically, he separated the waters. There was water in the sky, probably the atmosphere or a canopy of water, which, again, we can talk about later. And then the oceans below, as we know it. There was no dry land at this point. That doesn't happen until day three. Now, on day three, God creates dry land and plants. On day four, there is the sun, the moon, and the stars to govern the seasons and the days and all that. Day five is birds and fish filling the sky and the waters. And then day six is animals and mans and everything that creeps along the earth, which means, I think, insects as well. And then day seven is God's day of rest. And we're going to talk about the day of rest tomorrow in the next video. So that's the order of creation. Now, why did God create in that? Again, as I said, I don't know why he created in the order he created. It's beyond my comprehension. However, I do have a couple of theories, for lack of a better term. My first, well, maybe not theory, but thought is, I notice a parallelism when I look at the order of creation. Kind of two sets of three, if you will. First, light and dark, then the waters, and then the land and plant. And if you look at day four, five, and six, you see again, sun, moon, and stars. Well, that corresponds to day one. And then you've got the um, birds and the fish, the waters and the heavens above, okay, corresponds to day three. And then dry land and plants here on day three, or I'm sorry, day two, three. 
you're following, I'm sure. And then day six parallels by talking about the creatures that God created to live on the land, such as animals and man and insects, etc., etc., etc. So, I'm not sure what this parallelism means, but here's something I have learned as I have read through the Bible and studied it all these years. Anytime you see a parallelism like this in Scripture, there's usually a reason. What that reason is, I don't know. But I do know that there's a reason. Because anytime I see it anywhere else in Scripture, it, it, God has a purpose. There's something there. And I don't know maybe if it's something that the original audience would have picked up on, or if it's something that's just beyond man that will understand in heaven. I don't know. But I do know there's a parallelism, and that parallelism is important. The significance of it, I'm not sure. Just like I'm not sure why God created in the order he did. But I kind of think maybe if you figured out that parallelism, it may help you understand why he created in the order he did. My second thought is this. When I look at the order of creation and wonder why did God create in that order, I, I, I see the order of creation and say, you know, this doesn't make, as we would think, logical sense. It's kind of counterintuitive to evolutionary evolution, at least as I, I think about it. I mean, evolution, you need certain components at certain time, and the way God created, life could not exist during this time without God. I, I think the order of creation points to God as the creator. Um, the light existing at without a source. I mean, think about it. God said, let there be light, and there was light. Well, what's the source of the light? There is no source other than God willed it to be, and so it was. It's not until day four that you get a source for the light. To me, that says, well, God's just proving that he's the only one who could do this. Never mind the fact that from what we understand of Scripture, God created out of nothing. Again, something only God could do. But God creates light without there being a source. And then as you look on, he creates plants and whatnot. But plants require other things to help them grow, primarily insects to help pollinate and germinate and help them grow and pass along their seed and their and take over you know it, it the only way plants could have appeared without something prior to them was if god caused them to be i mean you don't get insects and whatnot to help pollinate and help them grow and spread until a few days later so my answer to those who say why did god create in the order he did is i don't know but i do know this the order of creation necessitates a creator. If things came to be in the order that the Bible says they came to be, the only rational, logical explanation for that would be a creator, God. And I think that's part of why he created in the order he did, to prove that there is a creator. So... That's my answer for today's question. Why did God create in the order he did? Well, I don't know 100%, but I do know this. If I don't know 100% why God chose to. My answer would be this. I think that the order of creation necessitates a creator. And I think that's part of why God did it. I hope that all makes sense. I know this was a longer video. I'm sorry. I try to keep these more to like five to seven minutes, but... It gets a little harder with some of these more complex questions. So that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you're doing well. Uh, we'll have one more video this week, and then it'll be the weekend. So take care. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you in tomorrow's video. Bye.